So embracing innovation is one of the priorities highlighted in the Authority's strategic plan. This includes a willingness to explore new pathways to the marketplace for creative and technology-based solutions. We're continuing to see a steady pipeline of inquiries where the proposed delivery of products and services sets out a more innovative um, approach than traditional models. This builds on recent progress, which has included the island's first digital banking license, the development of new technology platforms, and the approval of an e-money and payment services business. The pace of change within the financial services sector is continuing to accelerate and we're committed to playing our part in showcasing the island as an innovative and well-regulated jurisdiction. Within the authority, there's an emphasis on new ways of thinking, spe specifically around data management and analytics. The aim is to improve our interaction with industry and capture opportunities for growth as well as ensuring that we can devote more resources to value-added and risk-based supervision. That is why we engage with applicants at an early stage and will challenge them, where necessary, to demonstrate that their ideas for innovative new business are in the best interests of consumers, the financial services sector, and the Isle of Man as a whole. It is clear that a culture of innovation can lead to better outcomes for the users of financial services and is absolutely crucial in terms of future-proofing the island's economy. In this respect, the Authority's strategic goals are closely aligned to the ambitions set out in our island plan and the government's economic strategy. We're continuing to monitor global developments to help shape our approach to innovation, particularly in relation to crypto assets initial coin offerings, and other convertible virtual currencies. A request for input was issued earlier this year to invite comments on innovation and the regulatory perimeter. The response document was published uh, online last week, so I would encourage you to take a look at that. Your feedback helps to strengthen our understanding of emerging risks and how best to position the island to seize the opportunities arising from fintech innovation, such as crypto assets, initial coin offerings, and other convertible virtual currencies. Weighing up all the evidence, we feel that now is not the time to make firm decisions on the introdu introduction of crypto-related regulation. We will, however, maintain a watching brief on how the international landscape develops, and we'll reach out to you again in future for your expertise and input. The Authority continues to work closely with the Department for Enterprise, in particular the digital and finance agencies. The aim is to encourage innovation by promoting a seamless entry point for interested parties and applicants as part of the Finnovation Hub concept. An example of this united approach is the FinTech Innovation Challenge, which invites businesses to develop creative, sustainable and technology-based solutions to current obstacles facing the financial services industry. And I know we'll talk much more at length about that. As the financial services regulator, our role in the challenge will focus on exploring ways for the winning applicants to take their propositions to market. This will involve helping firms to navigate the regulatory environment and raising awareness of options such as our regulatory sandbox, which offers a way to test innovative products and services in a live environment. Collaboration is the key to success of the challenge and in a wider context, the island's ability to promote its strength as an open, forward-looking and agile jurisdiction. We're also continuing to support the finance agency on the InsureTech Accelerator program. This is another demonstration of how the authority, the government and the financial services sector are joining forces to develop the Isle of Man's proposition. We have a common purpose to protect what we have worked so hard to achieve and to position the island to achieve sustainable economic growth in the years ahead. Thank you very much. I'll pass on to Michael.
Thank you, Bettina, and good morning, everyone. Um, and um, just in, in advance of the, the discussion session, uh, the slide is open for uh, questions. If you want to submit any, anything, uh, uh, John will be moderating that, uh, that uh, when we finish speaking. Now, my theme here uh, for my uh, few minutes this morning is really uh, to talk about the fact that change and evolution is nothing new. I think the history of the art of man is one of constant evolution, constant change, and technical innovation, and embracing all of that. If we had more time, we could talk about various aspects of industry over, over, over hundreds of years in terms of how that's personified on the art of man. But I'm going to look specifically at my sector, financial and professional services. And I've got a few slides here, just really, uh, just really quite light, really, just trying to look, look at the history of the banking industry. So, you know, back in the day, telegraphs, uh, telegrams, Moving on, 1968, 1969, and the, uh, the, the first um, ATM cash machines, online banking, phone, uh, phone apps, mobile banking. It's all a constant series of change and innovation and how the, uh, the banking industry, in this case, have, have in, uh, changed the way they engage with their customers. You know, I them, usually about a 10 yearly cycle. Uh, that's been embraced through all of our industries on the Isle of Man. And that's just looking at uh, the way that uh, banks deal with customers, not how they deal with things operationally, which uh, again is subject to subject to constant change. Um, looking at our current projects and how finance are the man supporting this, uh, Bettina's already mentioned our um, insure tech uh, program. Many of you will know that um, insurance is the biggest uh, single sector of the economy on the Isle of Man. So when we were looking at a, 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 doing a fintech project within finance. Uh, we uh, decided to do something anchored in the insurance industry. So this is in progress at the moment. I've got a couple of slides in terms of where, we, where we're going with that. It started, we started working in April 2021, and this was the actual accelerator program itself was launched um, uh, earlier this year uh, with, uh, in conjunction with a Swiss partnering company called F10. Uh, now this project is designed to support, support evolution within the um, insurance sector, but we're already seeing spin-offs in wider uh, fintech applications. This has been very successful. Um, we've, the, these are the partners that we've, we were engaged with in terms of the cohort for InsureTech. Uh, we're creating, within the insurance industry, um, uh, connections with uh, innovative businesses to help our incumbents and our stakeholders now on the old man em embrace the next uh, stage of change creating an ecosystem where they can collaborate and showcasing the Isle of Man, as Bettina said, as a place uh, for, uh, that, that, that it really is, is very open to fintech, regtech, insurtech opportunities. And I know Lyle's got much more about that this afternoon in the context of the, the innovation challenge. We're really pleased with the way that this is progressing, and I think it personifies the, uh, the, the theme I started to, uh, just a couple of minutes ago. The Isle of Man is constantly changing and evolving, and I think the success of the Isle of Man is based on the fact that our stakeholders embrace it and look forward to change as, as it comes and as we embrace it. And I'll hand over to Lyle. Thank you very much. Um, I'm also going to look back, uh, maybe not quite as far as Michael, um, but I'm going to look back to uh, when the agency started and one of the uh, first elements that we looked at as an agency was uh, how to establish a blockchain uh, 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 ecosystem on the Isle of Man. So uh, the agency was formed in 2018, um, and one of the first things to do, what we did was to do a lot of research, bring some industry bodies together to understand what the benefits of blockchain were um, and what elements we could uh, encourage to the Isle of Man. We worked with the FSA um, and went to the National Strategy Group to agree a political direction that we would be a supportive jurisdiction for blockchain industries. We launched that initiative in 2019. Uh, oddly, we launched it at an e-gaming conference, uh, ICE, in 2019. Um, uh, but there was a, a lot of interest at that point. Um, and we started to see uh, some uh, high levels of interest coming in. Um, in 2020, we realized, actually, we were turning away more businesses um, because of our uh, procedures and the way that we were looking to handle this. So again, we pulled the industry together, we did some workshops, and we agreed a new way of working uh, to support the blockchain initiative. 
and that's where the uh, blockchain accelerator was born from. Um, and we walked, uh, sort of moved away from the previous concept we had of a blockchain office. Through that, we then realized that uh, blockchain was essentially, for us, a form of fintech. And uh, we could achieve a lot more um, by widening our scope to include fintech businesses. And we'd learned so much through the journey um, with our relationship with the FSA, with our relationship with Finance Other Man, um, that we could very easily expand the scope and do more. Um, so it started with considering how we work more closely with businesses and the regulators uh, to create uh, this innovation hub concept. That's about uh, enabling us to understand what's happening um, uh, out in the wild, what's, what kind of regulation we might need in the future, what kind of businesses we're seeing, and being able to adapt our proposition uh, in a more agile fashion to be able to bring the, uh, new businesses to the island. Uh, at this conference last year, we then announced we were going to do a FinTech Innovation Challenge. Um, and as you saw from the presentation earlier this morning, we have now completely widened out this initiative to be a FinTech initiative rather than just blockchain. Albeit blockchain is part of um, uh, FinTech in some guises. Uh, on the uh, uh, right hand side here, I've also kind of given an indication of where we are in terms of the size of the ecosystem. So when we started um, uh, this in 2018, we didn't start from scratch. We had about 30 people on the island that were working in the uh, crypto space that we were aware of. Typically, when you start these initiatives, you see a bit of a slow start. So we saw uh, 10 additional people come in through 2019 when we launched, another 15 in 2020. And then from there, you can see that we uh, started picking up the numbers, uh, 37 last year, and uh, we expect 75 this year. Um, I expect that number to increase further next year. Um, so we're, we're getting up to similar numbers as we see uh, in e-gaming, which was, we've been running for 20 years. So I think there's some real opportunity here to uh, drive forward and, and do some new things. And uh, then perhaps this conversation is to consider what the future is going to be. So I'll sit down and let John take it from here. Everybody. Everyone's a bit quiet. Which I do realise I stand between you and lunch, so we'll try and make it as enjoyable as possible. Um, I've only got a limited number of questions from the floor at the moment, so feel free to, to pose any questions, particularly difficult ones, because I'm sure they'll love that uh, at this time of, this time of day. Um, everyone talks about the future, but Often I hear, when I used to work with government, we talk about the past. The future is about seeing what the future can be. And I'll, 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 I'll illustrate this. Is I've done three um, fintech businesses, and they're all about looking into the future and destabilizing what was happening in the market at the time. One, the limit on, it was a, it was a type of um, money supermarket.com between businesses. And the, the messages on that at that time was about a million messages a day between all the insurance providers. We introduced technology, it went to 100 million messages a day and blew away all the people that we were competing against. The second one we did was the going rates in a market on defined benefit transfers at the time was about 3,000 quid. We introduced software that reduced the price to a fixed fee, 700 quid. It's about destabilizing the future. So the first question I'm going to ask is, for the Isle of Man, what does the future look like in fintech? What are the consumer or business opportunities? Um, Lyle, we'll start with you. Okay, so I think from my perspective, uh, you know, fintech is, is about the users. It's about how people interact with um, uh, the, the financial services systems. So, you know, we already see the world is changing quite a lot uh, through digital interaction, online banking, apps and so forth. Um, on the Isle of Man, perhaps we're a little bit further behind the, the curve on some of those elements than we've seen elsewhere. Um, uh, because of our, our, our sort of political situation, uh, some of the things that are open to people in larger jurisdictions like the UK may not be open here. And some of that's down to scale. And that's where I think we need to see innovation uh, in technology help uh, close those gaps. And actually, the opportunity, for, I think, for us is to demonstrate how things can work 
before what they've done in larger jurisdictions and, and be more of that test bed for technology as well. We have a different market size, we have different challenges and all of that helps uh, to innovate in different ways. Um, but ultimately, you know, for me, FinTech is about making sure that users have that ability to interact, perhaps without going into a branch um, and perhaps more quickly and expediently without some of the barriers um, that exist today, but still in a very safe and compliant manner. Thanks. You don't all have to, have to answer, we're just trying to like, chuck out some great questions from the floor, but, and a couple which are particularly challenging, which I want to I get at, because it's something that is significant for, um, for actually for, for my own business. The question is, with human talent and financial capital flowing to other areas of the world where innovation is embraced, are you fully aware you are now competing with businesses and opportunities to stop the island becoming an isle, island of mailboxes? One of the key things in this, for example, is digital passports that's been introduced in multiple countries. How would you respond to that? Michael, we'll start with, you, with yourself. Well, uh, John, it is a good question. I mean, the, one of the, the main challenges facing uh, the businesses in the room, and well, all businesses on the Isle of Man, is human capital. I mean, we, we, we operate in a, in, a, in a worldwide market. Um, you know, it, it's clear, it's apparent to, to everyone that there, that there is more job vacancies than people um, available to take them on, on the island. So we, we have to be innovative and we have to be uh, attractive to people in terms of um, uh, the, 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 how we present the Isle of Man and uh, how we present the, the type of opportunities that are available. I think there's, there's some fantastic uh, businesses here, there's fantastic opportunities here. Uh, I think Lance put it as an interesting one. We, we, have, have his, we do have history of being a uh, test bed uh, for evolution and for technology. I mean, Max Telecom is probably the, the most widely known example of that back in the 1990s. Uh, the, the, there are obvious ways that we can, uh, that we can do that. Um, scale is, is, a, is, is interesting, but I think that the scale also speaks to the test bed concept because we, you know, we, do, we, do, we, do, we can operate in a, in a controlled environment. But no, uh, I think it's... Uh, yeah, it, it, it obviously is true that we do operate in a, in a, in a worldwide environment and uh, you know, we need to make sure that, that, uh, that, that we, we remain an attractive jurisdiction. Lyle, digital passports and how that uh, interesting dilemma the government has with regard to its KPMG, economic strategy and uh, restrictions for the future, how are you going to join these two together and make us attractive for these tech experts to come to the island? So I think we've, we've, we've talked and we'll continue to talk through different sessions today around skills and the, the, the access to human capital. Um, we all know this is a really big issue. We also know, um, as, as John's alluded to, that, that other jurisdictions are looking at uh, digital residency um, and that can create opportunity in different ways. Um, I think that's definitely something that we need to consider and put on the table and understand how we interact with uh, a work, more global workforce. Um, Again, you know, we saw on the Crown Dependency uh, conversation earlier, this is not a, a discussion point that's unique to the other man. This is very much a much wider uh, topic than that. But we do need to understand how we can make those things uh, work from a government perspective. Businesses also need to understand how they're going to interact with the workforce digitally as well. And that's uh, an equally large challenge. Um, but working together, we need to understand what, what those best solutions are going to be. I'm going to leave this challenge with you. It's because understanding is one, actions are another. What are the government going to do? You don't have to answer it now, but over the next 12 months, I think the industry has a right to expect that. I'm going to come on to Bettina because there's quite an interesting question for, for Bettina as regulator. How can digital promote the island to um, be a place for innovation when the regulator is already falling behind jurisdictions and their more communicative approach to real innovations? Um, I would probably say that falling behind is, is, is a big word. Um, as a small jurisdiction, it's very difficult from um, just a, a number of, of employees as well as from the budget that we have to make sure that we are always you know, front-running innovation. What we need to do, and I think we have been doing that with the team, is um, to be very selective in terms of where we can spend our energy, um, where where do we see the priorities, and, and again, helping businesses to succeed. 
our annual report um, this year that we just released um, a couple of weeks ago um, is the theme is future proofing um, financial services. So we're doing a number of strands, including, for example, working so closely with um, the Department for Enterprise finance and, and digital, but equally updating our automation and again being accept, accessible. And it was interesting to hear in the e-gaming panel um, that not all regulators, and I would certainly agree that's not just for e-gaming, but for financial services, are as accessible as we are. And for existing or new firms to reach out and say, we have an idea in terms of innovating products, services, or the way we do things, um, we're very open. And that is, I would say, probably our strong point here on the island, that there is that accessibility and that advice that most regulators in the world do not provide. I would just follow that up as well to say, um, you know, the reason we're here today is because we are working together and we're using um, the front door of the Department for Enterprise with finance and digital to understand what the challenges are both on and off Ireland, working with the regulator to make sure that we understand and we have the components in place to be able to deal with that. Um, and I, I, I think that's absolutely um, key. And we've seen things happen in the last uh, you know, 18 months, two years, which you wouldn't have imagined a few years ago, certainly when I arrived on the island. The fact that we are talking about an innovation hub where we're working clarity, the fact that we've got an insurtech um, uh, project, the fact that we've got a fintech challenge that we're, we're releasing internationally. These are, um, whilst not particularly new globally, are very new for the Isle of Man, and it demonstrates how quickly we are moving forward and, and um, uh, pushing forward and to try to do the right things. And John, if I can add, to, uh, also, uh, you mentioned government accepting the challenge in terms of what, you, what we're going to do about it in this space. I think it's, um, it's, it's front and centre. It, it's one of the, the, the key strands of the proposed new economic strategy of the island is to attract significant uh, numbers of people here, uh, creating jobs here and creating the infrastructure to support those. So uh, and that, that speaks to the same point, making the Isle of Man an attractive place for people and for businesses to, to relocate here. Okay, this is a, a summarization of that question. Building on the point you're all making about supporting businesses, what are the government doing to assist the generation of additional jobs by businesses moved to the island, part one, and part two, how do we get the necessary skilled people to be able to do those positions if we attract those businesses? So first of all, attracting businesses to the island, precisely what is the government doing at this moment in time to encourage those businesses to come here? So I think from uh, our perspective, we, we've completely changed the way that we approach business development um, as an agency. Uh, we put 60% of our focus on growing the existing businesses here, um, rather than just attracting new ones, and that's far easier to grow what we've got than, than uh, bring new people in. But we're equally, you know, got that the remaining 40% where we are still going out internationally, making sure we have a clear value proposition, making sure that people know uh, that the island is open for business. That's part of why we're doing the challenges that we've set out um, or we're setting out today. Um, how do we bring the correct human capital here as well? Well, a lot of that is about people, um, there are two things really. One, upskilling, um, which we are struggling with, and we talked about the prospect of a digital academy earlier. We've done a lot of digital literacy courses this year. We do need to enable better upskilling of online, online people. But secondly, we, want, we encourage those businesses to bring the skilled workforce with them. Um, and whether, you know, just the act of them bringing those skilled workforce uh, here, we know that once people get here, they fall in love with the place, they, they can uh, cross-pollinate some of those ideas and concepts and ways of working to other businesses, not even necessarily in the same sector. Um, and we've seen that, um, uh, you know, significantly over the past few years. So I, I think that um, I do acknowledge on the skills front there's more that we, we need to do, and that's going to be a, a key focus on attracting businesses I think we're doing uh, a reasonable job. Um, we can always do better, obviously, but we, we're pushing hard on that. Quick poll in the room. How many people or businesses are struggling with the right skill sets when employing new people to the island? 40% maybe? This is a clear and present danger to the future economic growth of the island. So I'm sure the audience would also encourage the government to 
progress those areas, particularly on the training and the skill side? Michael? Yeah, um, again, as part of the new economic strategy, there is, uh, there is going to be a, a, a specific workforce and skill strategy. Uh, that's been worked on at the moment in conjunction with the, all of the agencies, uh, other stakeholders, including industry, uh, you know, try and really uh, uh, you know, wrap that up in, into, into a defined plan of action uh, for the next couple of years, because uh, I think everybody appreciates that um, the availability of, uh, of human capital we're referring to, but at the end of the day, it's people. The availability of people to fill jobs at the moment is a big challenge for us. Uh, and and we, we can um, do things locally in terms of work, working with curriculums, working with, with education and, and doing that to perhaps release some more capital on the island and look, and look into the future. But no, we certainly can't ignore the fact that over the next couple of years, the, the, uh, the priority must be bringing people here and that uh, and, and, and bringing people here with, with appropriate skills. Certainly we, we've worked with businesses who've got uh, multi-jurisdictional footprints in terms of how we can help bring people from, from one jurisdiction you know, to, to um, to the island or also for other jurisdictions in their groups to the island and that, that's a, a well-trodden path in certain, uh, in certain cases. We were, you know, we were in South Africa a couple of weeks ago and, that, and, and uh, I think we all know the, the number of people who, who have moved here from that, from, from that part of the world but, that, but it's not the only one. Uh, we, we do support those but, uh, but uh, I think much more effort is needed in future and I think will be part of the new economic strategy for the government. Okay. Um, Tina, this is a question directly from the floor. Hand on heart, are we brave enough from a regulatory perspective to embrace the change of fintech can mean and encourage rather than discourage new businesses to come here and feel welcome? Can you pick up this with the sandbox conversation that we've had previously and also the director of innovation post within the, the FSA? Sure. So yes, it, it is a balancing act. So clearly uh, we're keen to have innovative businesses. I mentioned that we're very accessible and we do talk to a number of, of applicants, again, existing firms as well, in terms of what they want to do in, in this innovative space. Um, having said that, there are our regulatory rules um, that need to be met and we all know that legislative change um, takes, takes a long time. Um, so there are certain limitations that we have and equally meeting international standards is, is clearly a priority I know Moneyval and AML already got mentioned, um, but again, it is broader than that. There, there are international requirements that the Isle of Man, as an international financial centre, will have to meet and continues to meet, and that is often a limitation for you know certain business models. But as I said, we're we're working closely with applicants, and where we can, we can accommodate. Um, then we will do that. For example, we, we have a firm in, in our regulatory sandbox um, where we, we will get additional reporting. We work, work closely with them to upscale our skills. I think we just um, talked about skill sets, but making sure that we know um, um, what what our firms are doing in that, in that regulatory sandbox and uh, we can talk intelligently to them. And then, as I said, trying to reduce um, risks for consumers and Again, that has served the Isle of Man well. If you look at currently what is out there, um, you know, consumers are not always um, well protected, and we do need to make sure that we're comfortable what risk we're taking on for the Isle of Man. It only takes one scandal, and it's very easy to pick on the Isle of Man. So we do have to balance that quite well. And I think across the board, we all recognize the, the additional financial services businesses we're used to are being disrupted by technology um, and we have to keep up with that. Um, it's the responsible responsibility really of the finance agency and the digital agency to drive forward uh, some of the concepts around how we get the right businesses here. And there will always be a natural tension between the regulatory function, which has a very different mandate to the business development functions that, that, that we uh, drive. And that does create, I think, healthy but robust discussions um, and the fact that we're able to do that now um, more effectively, more regularly than we used to is again an improvement and it's an improvement that we'll continue to see as we go through the next 12 months and beyond. I, I think that's true, uh, but I think to echo uh, Bettina's point, I mean, one of the reasons that the Isle of Man has, uh, has been so successful in terms of financial services is the excellent reputation that we have. Uh, and that uh, part of that is the, the, the strength of, of, of our regulator, the, the stability of our legislative and regulatory framework, and, that, and that's certainly something from a financial services perspective. We're obviously very keen to ensure that we, that we keep that 
that reputation going forward. So yeah, I think it, that, that I mean, you used the word tension, and yeah, that, that might be appropriate. I mean, in terms of as we as we look to the future, it, it, there are some interesting conversations, but the, I think we always need to have that in mind. One of the um, the things that annoys me most about where we are, not necessarily the Isle financial services, but just general financial services. I've been asked maybe 25 times this year so far for a copy of my passport and my utility bill. <laughs> we're not in the 1980s anymore, yet we're still doing these. But not a single institution has asked me, was I a pet? As those people you know, sort of, who may or may not know, I worked for the government for 10 years. And I'm saying this now, Bettina, because I'm time expired, I'm five years out now. <laughs> so, but, but it's a case of, you know, so we're doing things sometimes from a, a from a administrative perspective in financial services which are just don't add the value which they're required to add. So on that basis, one of the questions here is, is from uh, Brian Hunt. I've been told that some transactions are costly time consuming to conclude, e.g. conveyancing when buying houses at. What are the government plans is to simplify the consumer's experience in the Isle of Man dealing with financial businesses, both from either a regulatory perspective or from a government perspective? Well, I can start from a regulatory perspective. So um, we have held relatively recently in the fall or was summer um, an AML demystifying event at, at the Manx Museum um, because very often people um, confuse compliance with, with checklists. So, you know, your point is, is well taken that, that sometimes it is easier just to look at the checklist and go through that. Um, without stepping back and to say, well, actually, with that individual, you know, what what is the actual risk that we should address here? Um, so we do quite a bit of outreach. We do training. Uh, we 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 think that you know, as compliance professionals, understand more what what it is that that is required, that that helps to make that consumer experience um, better. And you know, as, as I said earlier, we, we did a number of workshops with a number of technology and financial services businesses at the beginning of the year as we were looking to plan our innovation challenge and try to understand what challenges people wanted to uh, focus on. Um, and this is one of the topics that came up. Um, and I think I probably repeatedly said that it was very boring because it's not very new and it's something that potentially we should have been over by now. Um, but when we had the workshops, it came across very, very clearly that this was a considerable um, challenge for businesses and one they very much wanted us to focus on. Um, and that is why it's in the list of things for us to focus on for the FinTech challenge. Yeah, and equally, it's, um, it's in the InsurTech uh, work. That, that's one of the themes that's come out of there. And uh, we've got some businesses who've got some solutions in that space. Uh, again, as I said before, I mean, the Armand's reputation is built on you know, strong regulation, uh, but I think as as time passes and things evolve, you know, the idea of producing a utility bill, uh, you know, it is very much it's got one foot stuck in the past. But um, you know, at the end of the day, there are at the moment international standards that we all must meet. Here's one for you. We've got two basic utility concerns. We're a small island. Why do I need to print off a bill which is electronic, get someone to stamp it, and sign it when? They could have, I could have given permission to access that document directly. So, so I mean, it's about that rules are in place doesn't mean that the rules are correct. The checklist mentality that you talked about, about Bettina. And a, a, another simple example is who has struggled to get a credit card on the island? Well, I want to like book hire cars without paying a £500 deposit, and it is almost impossible to get a Unless I move my whole banking arrangements to somewhere else to get a credit card. Uh, well, John, on, on your first point there about the uh, being joined up with the utilities, and yeah, that's an obvious uh, a solution to the, the, the challenges we have around uh, KYC, and uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure there's there's mileage in, in looking at that. Um, in terms of uh, your second point on credit cards, that that, you know, that is a challenge on the other hand, uh, as banking groups, you know, look at look at their offer. Um, I think most of the de of the of decisions that have been made in that market have been made uh, simply on commercial terms within international banking groups. Uh, to, uh, so to which there's, there's there's little opportunity we we have to influence those. 
certainly from, from our perspective within the Department of Enterprise and, and government more widely, we're, we're engaged with international banking groups to see how we can, if there's anything we can do to help um, uh, perhaps eliminate any barriers that there may be for them commercially to, to operate on the Isle of Man. But yeah, over the years there's always been, it, it, it's waxed and waned, I think the number of people that have engaged with us, but it's, it's certainly something that's very active at the moment. And it's key to our economic strategy in terms of attracting people to the island. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a key point. This is something that maybe uh, not many people see, so it's probably worth uh, calling out. I, I know uh, uh, Michael and his team and actually an army of people have been very much focused on credit cards uh, of late. Um, so it's not that there's nothing happening in government. There, there's the, a lot of blood, sweat and tears going into this. Um, it, it has, it's not going to bear fruit in the next week or so, but there are a lot of people working on it. So uh, it is a challenge and there's a, you know, we've got to acknowledge as a government what we can and what we can't do. And we can't tell financial services institutes to provide credit cards, but we can try to understand what their concerns and their barriers are and understand how to remove it. And that's what Michael is focused on. It certainly is. And it's not just an Isle of Man issue. It, 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 it applies to a lot of, to other small jurisdictions as well. So, uh, and we're working with other jurisdictions as well to see if there's a, a pan island or pan jurisdiction approach that we, that we, where we can adopt there, there too. Fine. I'm going to go old school for the last question or two questions. So just shout out any questions that you have from the floor. Um, if you haven't been able to use the app or you didn't feel the, um, the, um, the inclination to do so. Is there any questions from the floor? I've got just one more from myself to ask. Nice questions would be good. <laughs> Come on. That was the question I was going to ask last, but I've got another one, but yes. So work permits, the question that came in, so it may be yourself that raised it, uh, it raised the question. Given the current position of employment and the archaic nature of work permits, are they still relevant or, or what, how they should be updated, what we should we do? I think that's the question that we are also asking internally at the moment. Um, you know, as, as we look to uh, the economic strategy, we look to our ambitions, um, not just for the strategy, but for uh, the finance sector and the digital sectors, um, that we, we recognise there's some challenges with bringing people in. We want to remove as many of those barriers as possible, um, but we want to do so in an appropriate way. And uh, we have to work with the rest of the government to understand uh, what some of those challenges are. But it is, it's an active stream of work um, at the moment. Because they're comeovers, basically. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um, a number of the people who are coming to the UK, sorry, are coming from the UK saying we're British, so why do I need a work permit? Okay, um, last question um, to the panel, and then we can all go and have something to eat, because I'm starving myself as well. Um, right. I assume this conference is going to take place maybe a year from now again. So what will you have achieved by this time next year? And I guarantee if I'm chairing, I will ask you the same question back. So what are you going to achieve over the next 12 months? Well, I think I laid mine out earlier, so I don't want to repeat all of my uh, KPIs, but we've, we've, you know, the large uh, number there was on uh, 300 jobs across the digital sector. Uh, from a financial services perspective, we talked about having some uh, uh, fintech companies coming in and starting to register. We looked at 10, and we said we wanted to have four looking at licensing on the other man. So I think those are the ones that are appropriate here. We should have also have completed the fintech challenge and started uh, implementing a solution. Bettina? So from the regulatory perspective, um, we, we are currently looking at rolling out our revised supervisory methodology. So again, um, I think in a year you will see a change in terms of us focusing more on impact and more on risk. Um, equally, we continue to build out our automation to be more data driven, to be more analytical. So again, that um, is something that uh, we'll try to achieve over the next year. 
and continue the relationship in terms of being accessible, working with finance and digital to make sure that um, we have those discussions on innovation, on new firms or existing firms that want to do something in the space, um, because again, we fully support that. From our perspective, one of our key priorities for 2023 is to uh, significantly increase the, the way that the Isle of Man and the financial services community on the Isle of Man is, is promoted in, uh, around the world to um, uh, increase the profile of the Isle of Man. That's one of our, our most uh, significant objectives, but perhaps more, most relevant to this conversation. Um, this time next year, I'm hoping that we'll have uh, satisfactorily concluded uh, one round of, of insure tech um, uh, 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 onboarding of new businesses in supporting the insurance industry. And we hope that uh, this time next year we'll be halfway through the next stage of that journey in terms of attracting new businesses uh, to support our existing industry here. Thank you. Um, in the time-honoured fashion, I hope you'll join me in thanking our, our panel for one, for their presentations and also taking their the questions as well. Thank you.